when it's all said and done, we're going to have to, unfortunately, I believe, add him to the podium of worst Rays signings in history, i.e. Pat Burrell, i.e. Yoshi Satsugo. You are Locked on Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Race podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every single day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays. Check us out there uh, and email us anytime, LockedOnRays at gmail.com. Today's episode of the Locked On Race podcast is brought to you by Tax Network USA. Did you know that it's never too late to resolve your tax issues with the IRS? Don't wait. Reduce your tax debt and get help from a team of licensed tax professionals by calling 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com forward slash locked on, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. All right, Ulysses, it is one of our favorite things to do every single week. Mailbag episode. I told Stu Sternberg not to call me at this hour. Man, he really needs to respect what's going on. He should be watching the Rays-Cubs game that is going on at the moment. So, Stu, I'm going to have to take your call a little bit uh, later. I apologize for that because we have mailbag questions to get to. You know, I try to prioritize the listeners over uh, Stu Sternberg. And here we go. That's what we're going to try to do here. Um, This first question uh, from Michael Townley, who uh, I don't know if we've heard from him before. Um, First time, I think. Maybe he's a longtime listener, first time. Yeah, we like that. So if you've never reached out to us, please do. We like uh, to see and hear from new faces and voices. Uh, Michael says, question regarding the players this season. Who would you guys say? have been the three best players for the Rays so far and the three worst. Ooh, coming in hot, Michael. Um, How do you want to do best uh, or worst first? Uh, Let's start with best. Okay, okay. So just downhill from here. Okay. Downhill from here, yep. Um, Well, I like this season. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's get the obvious guy out of the out of the way first. Isak Paredes is, is the offensive stalwart MVP All Star nomination guy for the race yep. this season. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. If you like average, he's hitting a 287. If you like WAR, he's already at 2F4. If you like WRC plus, he's at a 145. So right. no matter which way you like baseball, there's a stat that says Isak Paredes is, is really good, and that's the case for for this year. Yes, uh, Isak is also on my list here, obviously. And frankly, if we were going to go to three best players, you might just say Predes, 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 and be done with the question. But uh, all fun and games aside, what you said is there. Um, I'll go ahead and throw out my number two. I'm not sure if he's on your list here. And not a lot of flash, not a lot of pomp and circumstance, but just been consistent solid you can rely upon him start in and start out this year zach latell um, you know you're basically going to get a quality outing from him five and two thirds six innings seven innings and it's going to be three earned runs or fewer it might be a different movie of how he gets to those final numbers but at the end of the day we know what we're getting from him and he's given this team a chance to win and he's had to elevate himself into a role that maybe he never really anticipated because now he's the guy that everybody is talking about and saying he's the, the one consistent starter at this juncture or one of the few that we can say down all the way to the beginning of the season. Yeah. I mean, I think he's, he's that guy for sure. I mean, basically averaging six innings each time out there and I like what you said. It doesn't matter how he gets there. So he could get shellacked a little bit in the first inning and then he go, he can go five scoreless or he can get solo homered here, solo homered here. And then a a little bit of a run here. Like 
it doesn't matter, but you know exactly what you're getting from Zach Littell. And that is such a huge thing. And I don't think a lot of people would have said uh, that he would have been that guy when you mentioned right. names, Eflin, Savale, um, uh, Pepio, Bradley, like you, you wouldn't have a pick Littell as, the, as that guy, but he has definitely been that number one guy. And can I say my number three, because we've gotten two of the same, but I think this okay. one might be a little bit different. I am curious to hear uh, who your number three is. Yes. This guy's got a 2.00 ERA, 27 innings pitched, a 2.69 FIP, already a 0.5 F4. He's a reliever. I've called him Jake McGee Mm 2.0 with Clevenger. I think, yes, there's been a little bit of a hiccup here and there, but honestly, he's been the most um, impressive arm out of the bullpen this whole season for me. Yeah. Um, I, I think coming from the left side, coming back from an injury, the numbers that he's putting up and, and I don't feel any sort of negative way when he's on the mound. Um, yeah, things can happen, but it, I, there's a lot of negativity with how the bullpen, uh, overall has been, uh, performing in 2024. Yeah. Garrett Clevenger is not in that list for me. It's uh historically bad for the relief core this year if you look at the era and some of the other metrics i mean pretty much across the board defense offense everything is not going too hot for the rays presently um i actually have a different reliever it would be kind of 3a 3b with clevenger and this other guy i'm going to go out and suggest maybe recency bias here but pete fairbanks pete fairbanks since he's returned from the il and since May third, May eleventh, May eleventh, he's had thirteen straight scoreless outings, and he's had to get out of some tough situations that he wasn't necessarily put in. I.e., Phil Maton loading the bases and Fairbanks having to clean up the mess from there. Uh, and you know, getting the last three outs of the game, he's a guy that we've had to rely upon time and time again. And some really um, tough outings there too. One run games in boston baltimore toronto other run uh one run games against the likes of the oakland athletics so that's uh that's my guy for you know at least the last several weeks i would say as well so. yeah I, he was on my list too he was my 3b uh okay. so i guess we have 3a and 3b flipped but that's okay that's that's uh yeah it's okay to have uh, those flips but no i think he's he's been great since he come he he came back from the il stint He's been a different pitcher, and especially that outing in Miami with uh, Mayton just having no sort of control and then him coming out and having to strike out two of those guys and then a comebacker to him to, to finish that that game off. Uh, that showed me that he was back. Yes. Um. All right, let's move on to the not-so-hot so far this year for the Rays. And little peek behind the curtain, some of my – um due diligence as part of this exercise i tried to weigh not maybe with all these names but expectations versus 2024 performance what were you expected to do coming into the season and what have you done or not done this season and i think a couple of names fit the bill um but i'll let you go ahead and start ulysses who's your first name on this list so in no particular order i think obviously we both have randy rosarena Yes. In this top three, just especially with the expectations, this is a guy who has put up consistently 125 WRC plus each year. He's a 2020 guy in back to back to back seasons. He's not that he's not that guy anymore. No. Uh, at least not not in the in the first uh, two and a half months of the season. It's getting worrisome. It's getting worrisome because you can't yeah. say it's early. It's not early. Um, there's less than a hundred games left, so things need to move on and so yeah he's been unfortunately one of the worst players yeah and uh, i have not checked the exact numbers but he's got a rank uh first or last however you look at it in batting average and strike uh, strikeout rate some of those other metrics um the only thing he really has going for him as of right now is he might get to 20 home runs he has eight right now but other than that not so much. Um, another guy that I have on this list, expectations versus performance, salary versus performance, uh, Phil Maton. Phil Maton uh, has just not done it this year. 
for whatever reason. And uh, I said it either earlier this week or last week that when it's all said and done, we're going to have to, unfortunately, I believe, add him to the podium of worst raise signings in history, i.e. Pat Burrell, i.e. Yoshi Satsugo. Um, go up and down the list there. Yeah, no, I, it's it's not been a great... I know May uh, seemed like he was getting it back on track, but April and June have been horrific for him. We, yeah. we just said it a, a few episodes ago, the numbers, it's... It, they haven't been pretty, and if it doesn't get fixed soon, you're looking at a guy that po- potentially could be let go, man. I mean, it's- yeah, it could be DFA. Might just say, "Hey, we're going to cut our losses here. Call up Joe Rock, or maybe go out and you know find the next." You can make some cash on whether Randy Rosarena performances will become a little bit better on Price Picks, whether it's stolen bases, home runs, or hits. Take your pick of more or less on Randy and add them to your price picks entry today. With how well Randy plays baseball, or we want him to play better baseball, you can turn $10 into $100 with just a few taps. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first match deposit up to $100. Again, Use the code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Price picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. So get in on the action with price picks. Download the app today. Use code locked on MLB, L O C K E D O N M L B, for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Policy Genius. Policy Genius is the smarter way to buy insurance. Their proprietary technology makes it easy to compare personalized quotes and policies from the top rated insurers side by side. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options even offer same day approval, and you can avoid those unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius's team of licensed experts is here to answer questions, handle paperwork, and help you make decisions with confidence. They work for you, not for the insurance companies. So check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash lockdown MLB or click the link in the description of today's episode to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B. Guy that nobody's heard of or is off the scrap heap that they matriculate into a under three ERA and then get rid of him the next season. Just get somebody from AAA that might, you know, be going under uh, the radar right now. But, uh, we, you know, we saw Manuel Rodriguez a little bit earlier this season. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because those six point that seven point five million club option that ain't going to get picked up. There's only a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar buyout. So really, it's six point five. Yeah. So and, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. that 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 amount gets gets thrown at him to just like, hey, we we can't support you anymore yeah and the other thing that's a gut punch is because you have a lot of players in that clubhouse that are not making that type of money that are producing at least somewhat of a positive war wins above for placement adding some value to the team and it's like this guy is just stealing millions pretty much and when he's on the mound there can't be a lot of confidence from the guys playing behind him or the guys in the dugout frankly wouldn't you uh like to uh have the the chance to give Zach Littell that six point five million dollars instead. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That'd, that'd be nice. Yes. Um, my third guy, another pitcher. Ah, okay. So you, that means that we have different guys. Which yeah, is I'll great. go ahead and throw mine out there. So yeah, expectations versus performance. Again, not like I had high expectations for this guy by any means, but your favorite player of the twenty twenty four roster, Mister Alex Jackson, in his oh sixty one batting average and two thirty nine OPS and contributing to the catching woes offensively for the race. 
it's it's a black hole of offensive nothingness that the, the Rays are having behind the dish right now. Yeah. Um, and I guess every 50 at bats, he'll hit a 430 foot home run. Outside of that, it's strikeouts and misses and nothing else doing. It's been pretty, you know, grim, the offensive yeah. um, performance by by Jackson. And it's also been pretty grim to see Aaron Savale on the mound uh, this year. Mm-hmm. 551 ERA, 4.6 FIP, uh, barely 0.2 F4. So ba- he's basically replacement level right now yeah. in 67 innings pitch. I mean, this is a guy that you gave up Kyle Manzardo for, uh, right. friend of the pod. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's it's just been tough that it hasn't been at all good in Tampa right. um, for, for Aaron. So I guess, you know, uh, Michael asked for three, and uh, we gave him a little bit yeah. more. We give him a little bit more. Now, in Savali's defense, he has improved a little bit in his last couple starts of being a five-and-dive guy, not quite to the level of Zach Littell. But, hey, at this point, I'll take five innings and four earned runs, five innings, three earned runs, whatever it is in that scenario. So uh, awesome question there. Uh, We'll move on down the list. Uh, This is another fun question that we're going to get to. Um, Let me just pull it up here from... At Big Blue Fan underscore on X, aka uh, Glue. Glue is uh, the name there. He says, or she says, or they say, uh, Hey guys, huge fan question. If you theoretically could have any player in the league under an 850 OPS, not a pitcher, who would it be? Don't worry about contract. It's just more of a fun idea. Uh, this was a perfect fun question. So yeah. big blue, thank you for that. Um, I went uh, for the fences. Oh, you want the only uh, the only uh, stat that you care about is OPS, and they ha- okay. it has to be under eight fifty. Fine, give me a guy that has this slash line, Kevin. Three hundred one batting average, three thirty nine on base, four eighty three slugging, eight eight twenty two OPS. Only strikes out 17.7% of the time. He has a 136 WRC plus. And guess mm. what? He's a switch hitter. He's good looking. And he's amazing behind the plate. You know him. You love him. Sometimes we might hate him. Adley Rutschman. Oh, yeah. Give me Adley all day long. I mean, what, what has been the biggest deficiency in the Rays? traditionally in in their in their whole um mm-hmm. stay as a franchise the catching position this guy yeah. is everything that you could ever hope for to fix that yes uh that was also my choice there if uh big blue <laughs> wanted to make the exercise a little bit more interesting maybe you go down to 800 ops or 780 770 ops because frankly in this day and age there's not a whole heck of a a lot of guys that have an 850 plus OPS that is like elite level. But uh, to all your points there, Adley Rushman is the guy. The bonus is that he's a catcher, a young catcher, a durable catcher. He played 154 games last mm-hmm. season. He's only getting better. And what I really like about Adley, everything I've heard and read and seen from him is that he's a true leader and a guy that can bring a ball club together, unify the position players in the pitchers. And we've talked about this of, Hey, you call up junior Caminero. Don't give him that save your label. Well, that's exactly what happened with Adley Rushman. When he got called up, the Orioles weren't good. They thought that they were going somewhere and they eventually did. But basically since he was drafted one overall, he was the guy that had the microscope on him of you better be the next great thing. And so far he's living up to all those expectations. I see him, and I know it's early, uh, you know, assuming he doesn't have a, a Wander Franco like off the field issue or anything come about to that extent. He's going to be next line of great, great catchers that we talk about and we just say the last name and we know who they are Rodriguez, Posada, Posey, Maurer. That's the type of player that uh, he is leaning into right now and I think is going to be in a very short amount of time. I love the the hitting aspect. I love the fact that he's a switch hitter. I love the fact that 
He hits the ball to all fields. He has power from both the left and right side. And as we saw against the Rays, uh, he he doesn't lack for big moments, i.e. Grand Slam and 6-RBI performance. But if you watch him closely, um, he, he is so detailed in that he, he really does have an A swing and a B swing. So when he gets to two strikes and he has to protect, he can shorten it up and uh, mash a single up the middle or a single the other way or a double the other way, whatever it may be. But um, he every type of pitch... He, he's able to do damage to uh, breaking ball at the ankles inside. Yeah. He'll turn on it. Fastball up elevated 96, 97 mile per hour. He'll swing early and pull it down the line. So he, yeah. he is a, a complete, complete player, not to mention what he does defensively. And he's already got a all-star appearance to his name. He's got a silver slugger to his name. A lot of accolades on the four for this guy, but um, yeah, that, that was kind of my thing is, Hey, let me look down and see, see the catchers on this list. You know, it, yeah, it'd be great I, to have a, a, a Contreras as well. I mean, there, there's a lot of guys out there with under an 850 OPS this season that you would love to have on the Rays. I mean, if you want to go down and say Altuve and Simeon and yeah, but uh, this, but this Seager, is the problem but, though. Yeah. Like you, you need to fix a, an issue that you have mm -hmm. and Rutschman is just comes uh, awesome. Just to finish this off. Uh, you said those names. You're right. Let's uh, let's add um add some names from black and white. So we we got like what yep. uh, Campanella, Barra, Bench, Fisk. You know, there you go. So now we yeah. have all the names for all of the H demographic that we have on this podcast. Yeah, and I mean, there's a question of who would you rather start a franchise with? He might be the guy that. 850 OPS or not, that might be the guy that you're looking at as yes. you can have any player in the league. Who do you draft? Uh, if, if money is not a consideration, it's just youth and, and long-term expertise. And he's probably up there or he's definitely up there. Bobby Witt's another one. And you know, there's well, a lot of other guys too. I like what you're saying about money being a consideration. Cause I know that folks really care about their money. Uh, Kevin. Yes, they do. Um, on the Locked on Race podcast here, uh, we are all about keeping you in the loop year round, just like collection season. Don't let those unfiled taxes haunt you. Tax Network USA, they've got your back. With over 14 years of experience and an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating, they've saved clients over $1 billion. Whether you owe taxes, need tax planning, or struck gold with that parlay, maybe on FanDuel or Prize Picks. Call 1 800 549 1000, 1 800 549 1000, or visit tnusa.com forward slash locked on L O C K E D O N. Let the professionals handle the IRS while you enjoy the hundred or so raised games that are left in the season. I'll repeat it again tnusa.com forward slash locked on we also want to tell you this uh you need to make the switch to locked on sports today it's a free 24 7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming and shouting like some of those networks that we're not going to mention here uh locked on sports today brings you can't miss analysis opinions and news streaming 24 7 on youtube or the free amazon fire tv channels app it is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. All right, Ulysses, getting to this final mailbag here on the episode. Two fun ones already, and we've got a lot more that uh, we're going to have to dive through eventually over the forthcoming weeks. Uh, from Rachel in Tampa, she says, The Rays have started to turn the corner a little bit with the last couple series. I do have a question, though, since Eflin is on the IL and Springs is set to come back sometime later this season. Uh, I should note that this email was sent a little bit before we're reading it, so bear that <laughs> yes, in mind here. I think, uh, I think uh, Eflin, Eflin was on the IL and Springs yeah. is set to come back later this season. Which pitcher, who is a reliever in the Rays' bullpen, or uh, who is in the Rays' bullpen, should the Rays convert into a starter? I was thinking Sean Armstrong, since he has done some opening games a lot, leaving uh, Tyler Alexander at times to work the bulk innings. What are your all's thoughts? So uh, briefly, which reliever would make a good starter candidate? 
I don't disagree with Rachel, by the way. Thank you, Rachel, for for um, sending that email a couple of weeks ago. Our bad. Yeah. Um, it's all good. Sean Armstrong, six of his 25 appearances have been two innings. Mm -hmm. That's that's the candidate. I agree with yeah. her. And also, when you look at his pitch mix, he's actually he's not a, like a one pitch type guy. He's got the four seam, the cutter, the sinker and the slider. Those are the good things. Like you want a guy that can see a lineup twice. You got to mix things up. Now, the yeah. only issue that I see with Sean Armstrong and his repertoire is that the four seam and the cutter, they work beautifully. I mean, yes. like it, they have a struggle against those two pitches. Now, the sinker is getting hit at, uh, at a 405 batting average. The slider is hit at a 333 clip. So if you were to convert him to a starter, I think that those two pitches would definitely have to be a little bit modified somewhat because obviously those are not his his best pitches. Right. No, that's very fair. And I, I like how Rachel brought up Armstrong because he's got, like what you mentioned, some things working for him. He does have the size and the build, I think, to manage a workload like that at 6'2", 225 pounds. Um, excellent strikeout rate. He's worked multiple innings over the years uh, in multiple roles. And here's the thing with um, Armstrong. I think I read this a little while ago that um, he's okay with being put in any situation. Uh, yeah. He just wants to get action. And I think that's part of the battle when you try to convince a guy that, hey, we want to move you from a reliever to a starter. Now, when you do something like this, it's not like, okay, you've worked one innings, two innings. Now we're going to bounce you up to five, six innings. If anything, if we're being realistic about it, it would at most be a bulk roll, I yeah. think, where it's like three innings max, maybe three and a third. Um, and another consideration, you know, when you're looking at a reliever for this, uh, you've got to be efficient with your mix and your pitch count. And I think overall, Armstrong does a pretty good job of that. You can't uh, get away with, you know, uh, a 30, 34 pitch, one inning outing. You need to have 12, 15, 16, 17. And he's shown that yeah. at times. Um, I ultimately don't think this is going to happen, but if this is something that the Rays were considering, you know, I think Armstrong would be a good candidate. And here's the thing. It's, uh, you know, I guess his, is he going to be a free agent after this year? Yes, he yeah. is. So, maybe so why not, why not toy with it and see, Hey, maybe uh, make yourself more valuable uh, in the open market and, and show teams that you're versatile and in multiple situations there. So that's yeah. something to, to think about now. Um, the, couple bugaboos here is that when he does get hit it gets hit pretty hard and he doesn't um induce a ton of ground balls so right yeah a couple other things ball. yeah there but um yeah if you got the pitch mix you've got the efficiency you've got the stamina um that's a that's a good starting point for sure yeah no you're right though the, the bugaboo uh, with um the long ball uh we saw that against the orioles um, yeah. in that oil series when when they came to to the drop so but yeah he's he's kind of earmarked if if you needed to pick one guy i think it would it would right. be him and good point on the on the fact that you could try to see what he can do two three innings here and there because then that would make him a little bit more of a shinier object mm -hmm. uh to tell teams hey look at what he can do and by the way if i needed to make a list of people that are possibly going to get traded during the trade deadline. He makes yeah. the podium for sure. No, absolutely. And, uh, you know, if we're going to have really fun with this question, uh, one of your favorite players, and I'm not being sarcastic about this. Look, I don't think this is going to happen, but uh, he has the bones to, to do it. If, you know, we went back several years, Garrett Clevenger um, with his being from being a, a power thrower, from the left side and having the the four seamer, the yeah. sweeper, the slider, the cutter, the sinker, he doesn't get hit hard. He induces a lot of ground balls. He doesn't walk guys. Um, if you look at his savant page, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of red. Actually, he does walk guys. I meant to say he strikes out a lot of guys. The walk rate is something that would have to get uh, situated at some point in time. But uh, it's not like the Rays haven't done something like this before. There was a guy named Drew Rasmussen that they did it with Jeffrey Springs. They did it with him as well. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so maybe and I believe they, they started Rasmussen. I I was kind of banging my table for this a couple of years ago when they ultimately did it, uh, and he was only. I believe really a two pitch pitcher at the time with the mm -hmm. fastball and slider. But um, if I recall, he would work so quickly and get through an inning or two, like in a matter of a couple of pitches, it's like, why not roll him out for a third or fourth inning? And lo and behold, that's what happens. Of course, yeah. you also have the issue with uh, Tommy John surgeries and so forth on the come up as well. Yeah, no. And uh, I think, they don't need them, obviously, for 2025. Yeah. But again, it would be something kind of cool just to talk about. But I don't, I don't think it, it'll necessarily happen. I just think, like, if you need to pick one guy right now, right. the bullpen, I think you fun he exercise would be number one, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, and if if they really got into a hole like this, expect to see a lot of openers, double openers, and a lot of phantom IL stints. Uh, the Rays would work their magic, so to speak, before they really ever had to get to this point again with uh, making that determination or decision. But Kitty, uh, Rachel, aka Kitty on email, thank you for that. Everybody else, thank you for your questions. we got more that we'll get to eventually. In the meantime, hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you on Friday with Evan Klosky. <laughs>